welcome back to The Currents Podcast. I'm Erin Lindstrom, and I am so excited to take you to Sky's the Limit Yoga Company. Danielle, thanks for having us. Of course. Thank you for being here. We're so excited to be here. To start us off, could you tell us a little bit about like who you are and how did you get here on 25th Street? That is a very long story, <laughs> so I'm going to make it as quick as what I can. Okay. Um, my name is Danielle Talley. I am originally from Florida. Um, I was born in Spring Hill, Brooksville area, went to school at University of South Florida. Um, the last place I lived there was St. Petersburg. Um, I have lived here in Norfolk for seven years now. I actually moved here to open up the yoga studio. I, very silly me, I, I thought that uh, I'd be able to open, I moved here in 2017, I thought I was going to open in 2017, um, and we opened in 2021. Okay. <laughs> uh, lots of different reasons as to why, number one, it's hard to open up uh, a business, no matter what it is. Uh, the pandemic happened, so a bunch of things, mm -hmm. but um, uh, the company though, Sky's the Limit Yoga Co., I still started that in 2017. So the company itself started as what I like to call community-based. Mm -hmm. We do yoga at coffee shops, breweries, bookstore, the beach, like a bunch of fun places. Um, our fun fact is that we're now in seven cities throughout Hampton Road, so that's the one that I'm proud of. Uh, but it started off where I used to, when I first moved here, I lived in the Neon District. Mm -hmm. And um, I walked over to Bearded Bird, they're no longer there. They were open for maybe a month. I was, you know, middle of moving, like who doesn't want to go mm -hmm. crack open a beer? So I walked down and I, I'm looking around, the owner was there, told me that they had just opened. And I was like, cool, I'm opening up a yoga studio, would you like to do yoga here? And they were like, yeah, when? And uh, <laughs> I, this was in June of 2017. Mm -hmm. And um, I did my first class there July 3rd. I will never forget it because I knew nobody. I was trying to start this thing mm -hmm. and um, I had 18 people there. Wow. And I think that that is just the power of social media, hands mm -hmm. down. I knew that I wanted that to be a piece of the puzzle. One of our mission statements mm -hmm. is to take yoga off of the mat. So my idea was to bring yoga to places where you feel more comfortable. I know that yoga at a brewery is not everybody's cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do have yoga at coffee shops, mm -hmm. at a bookstore, at different things, so that there is something for everyone. No matter what, I have always had somebody that says they were maybe intimidated to come to a yoga studio. Uh, I've had primarily a lot of dudes that come to breweries and they're like, I feel comfortable here. Mm -hmm. So me trying this thing that people say is good for me, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of nervous to do it. Mm -hmm. I feel comfortable doing it here. So that was always my vision to have community-based classes. Mm -hmm. It was a way for me to be able to build the brand. Mm -hmm. Prince Inc. downtown, mm -hmm. they actually made my first logo and obviously printed some awesome swag. I would take this little plastic box to all the places I was going and say, I'm Danielle, I'm opening Sky's the Limit, yep. here is uh, swag that we have if you're interested and if there's one thing I have learned people love shirts <laughs> people love shirts it's so true. like it, it was it was a way for me to bring in more money and have have income mm -hmm. besides just these few pop-up classes yeah um I know your original question was who am I and that's why I love that question <laughs> because like it's it, it's complex and you know what I mean I want to hear all of that yes I'm one thing that stuck out to me you said like I moved here to open yeah a studio like how Why? How did you pick your, yeah, was it like a dart thrown at a map or mm -hmm. how did you end up in Norfolk? No, I do love that people call this the south sometimes, sometimes. because uh, this is definitely the farthest north I have ever mm -hmm. lived. Mm -hmm. um, so my background is actually not yoga. Mm -hmm. I worked in finance. I was doing yoga more part-time and uh, I had helped with a studio back home. I saw how they grew. I, I realized that I really, uh, there was something about it that I really liked. I, and I realized that my world of finance was not where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. This part-time yoga thing I was doing, like I wanted to make that work. And I had this vision of opening a yoga studio and coffee shop. Mm -hmm. That was my vision until really I landed on this space. And again, to take yoga off of the mat. My thought was, was as we go into a yoga studio, let's say that you and I are taking class together. Mm -hmm. We consistently go every Wednesday at 5.30. Like that's, we both see each other. Mm -hmm. We kind of do a little wave sometimes yeah. even. 
But a lot of times you leave the yoga studio and for multiple different reasons, you're quiet and there's not really a space for you to hang out. And so you just awkwardly leave. Mm -hmm. And it's this group of just amazing people and that community can't necessarily grow. Mm -hmm. So before I took any steps of leaving corporate America and trying to do my own thing, Mm -hmm. I was like, what is, where's the missing link? What is the thing that I want to change? or where do I see potential growth? Mm -hmm. And I realized it was community. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, where do I go if I want to just talk to you, if I want to just hang out? Yeah. And um, my other business is called The Caffeinated Yogi. Mm -hmm. So coffee is my jam. And uh, I was like, a coffee shop, perfect. So back home in Florida, I helped open up a, kind of like how taste here, I call that a a, a local chain. Yeah, I don't totally. really know what's the technical term, but like whenever yeah, you say taste, you. Yeah. people know like, oh, they're located everywhere, right? right? But right. everywhere like here. Here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was kind of similar to a coffee shop back home. Mm-hmm. And so I got to see, I knew what I liked in coffee. I knew nothing else. Mm-hmm. So I got to see a little bit of the of the behind the scenes, learn mm-hmm. how to make more than just the cup that I liked. Yep. And um, I, I then knew that I lived in St. Petersburg, Florida, which if you have never been, I would say over the past, 10 to probably 12 years if I had to put Mm -hmm. a time range on it it has grown like crazy Mm -hmm. and just for shits and giggles I kind of looked at what would it what is rent going to be and Mm -hmm. knew that that was not an option Mm -hmm. I started looking at other parts of Florida and then I realized why like my main thing for staying in Florida was Mm -hmm. Um, my following the yoga students that knew me and that liked me and wanted to practice with me but besides that, I have some family there, and I've always wanted to live outside of Florida. I got my master's in Utica College, but it was primarily an online program. So I had to be in New York for like two weeks. That, that doesn't count as moving. <laughs> and uh, so this was the farthest north that I looked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had friends that had lived here, and I looked at a bunch of other places along the way. Mm-hmm. And here, I just found the same charm that I really liked with St. Pete. Um, just the little districts or pockets of this city. Mm -hmm. It just, it has something that is special that I think St. Pete, even though it has grown a little too big for my liking, um, it, it still has something special, something that really warms my heart. So yeah, that's what brought me here. Yeah. That's so cool. So you're here now. Tell us a little about, I know you have classes here. You also have some like co-working in the morning. Can Mm -hmm. you Tell us more about what happens in the walls of this space. Yeah. So one thing that is on the door Mm -hmm. is it says yoga every damn day. It's so fun to watch people walk by that have never been in. And like they're walking probably to like District of Pizza or something. And they like giggle as they see the the sign. But we really do mean that. Mm -hmm. I teach yoga on Thanksgiving Day. It's Mm -hmm. probably one of my favorite classes to teach. Mm -hmm. We have a class at 9 a.m. And it's a 45 minute flow. And then afterwards, we do what I like to call more of a yogi brunch. So it's kind of a bring your own little cake or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. We have some mimosas or orange juice and Mm -hmm. coffee for you to just kind of hang out after. This past Thanksgiving was the first one that we did because we opened Black Friday of 2021. So Black Friday of 2022 was technically one year. Mm -hmm. So this was our first Thanksgiving actually being open. It was so cool of having people that were either traveling. We had people that recently moved here, became members because they were like, we have no family and this is so awesome. So we do a lot of yoga. Um, yoga we every damn day yoga. and we do I a lot that. of yoga yeah. but we have multiple different types of yoga so it says mm-hmm. yoga every every damn day and another one of our phrases is yoga for every body mm-hmm. which is a very common phrase mm-hmm. in the yoga community and we try to stay true to that as just having different yoga offerings so we have things from a 30 minute class to a 75 minute class we have kids yoga prenatal yoga I'm also a functional movement specialist, so we have mobility and yoga for athletes, a bunch of different workshops, fun events, things like that. Mm -hmm. So everything yoga, we try to cover it. (laughs) Yoga teacher trainings, all those things. Yep. And then how do we then take yoga off of the mat Mm -hmm. is uh, we have Mm -hmm. co-working. We have that Monday to Friday. Um, The times to start vary based on the day, but it's roughly 7 a.m. to noon every day. Yep. And uh, it's completely for free. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to anything. All the 
we ask is that you RSVP because sometimes we have people that rent the space. We've had everything from photo shoots in here, private yoga. Yep. <laughs> we had a cooking class that was really cool to see. Mm -hmm. um, in the near future, we have a painting class so people can rent it for a bunch of different things. Very cool. And um, so yeah, we have co-working, uh, we have massage here. My husband works for Norfolk Collegiate and he also has his own business. Mm -hmm. He's an athletic trainer, which I think that the term kind of sucks. You, you, <laughs> you hear it and you're like, oh, so like you're a personal trainer or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's probably more than capable of doing that. But um, I always like to give the example of imagine it's football season. So we're watching a game of football. Somebody unfortunately gets hurt and you have a team run out to assist. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what he does. Um, so he meets with clients here as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a fun shop. Yeah. Uh, um, merch, is, so merch is is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I had a part-time job for years at Express, and uh, I don't think I realized how much I would enjoy that piece of it. Yeah. So, yeah, we have a bunch of fun things here. That is awesome. All right, I'm going to ask you a question, and we're going to go in a kind of opposite direction. I love it. We're going back to the foundations for a minute, because <laughs> I'm sure there are some people who might be seeing this, and they're like, yeah, yoga, stretching, moving. Cool. cool. Right? <laughs> exactly. So can you tell us more? And off camera before we were talking about the yoga teacher training and you mm -hmm. mentioned like the eight branches of yoga, something mm -hmm. like that. Like, mm -hmm. can you just give us an overview? And for people who like don't have a background more than like stretching downward dog. Yeah. What are we talking about really? Yeah, totally. So I'm going to give a little bit more of my backstory because it's okay. going to kind of make sense to this. Mm -hmm. um, I, from age three to 18, I was very into dance. I danced competitively. I taught mm -hmm. dance. It was my jam. And whenever I went to college, uh, not trying to bash my school by any means, I already said my school name, yeah. so <laughs> here we are. Um, I, I went to the University of South Florida. I auditioned to be a Sun Doll, which is part of their dance team. Mm -hmm. That was really not any type of dance that I've ever done. I like to say that's kind of like a hybrid of dance and cheerleading. Mm -hmm. And I was more like ballet, tap, jazz, lyrical, modern, all those fun things. Mm -hmm. I auditioned. I got it. And uh, before, like, you have to go to sign your contract or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they basically, one of the pieces of the puzzle I was signing was to say that I had to weigh in every week. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't be plus or minus five pounds. And I basically said, no, thank you in mm -hmm. as not nice of a way as that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then I realized how much I missed a dance. I missed it so much. It was a community that I literally grew up with. Yeah. And a friend of mine who also had a very similar journey to me in dance, she became a yoga teacher. And she was like, Danielle, try yoga. And I was like, nope, I don't want to meditate. <laughs> That was all I thought of with yoga. Yoga was meditation. And I said, nope, that's not for me. She was like, you really don't know what you're talking about. And then she said, try a hot power class. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hot, sweaty meditation sounds even worse. I don't want to do that. And she kept er like encouraging me mm -hmm. to do it. Finally, I sucked it up and I was like, all right, I'll go try this thing. And I got my ass kicked. Like, I, it was so hard and I was immediately hooked. Mm. I do guide yoga teacher trainings now. Mm -hmm. At the time though, I like to say I was the worst yoga student. I took maybe three classes and I, I was definitely hooked. I signed up for a yoga teacher training program. I truly think I was one of the worst students. I was young. I was working two jobs. I was in school full time, like way overworked. That's kind of what brought me to yoga. Mm -hmm. So another piece of my backstory is I then, once I started getting into this form of movement, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many things that I just want to know and learn about. And I went so down so many different avenues of mm -hmm. just health and wellness. So I am also a personal trainer, mm -hmm. functional movement specialist, nutrition coach. I've worked in the world of CrossFit before. I just tried to learn as much about movement, the body, mm -hmm. as what I could. So back home in Florida, I started to do a little bit of more of this functional movement thing with professional teams. So I worked with the Tampa Bay Bucks, um, the Lightning, and the Rays. And if you're not a sports fan, that just means professional football. Yeah. Teams. <laughs> <laughs> football, hockey, baseball. Got it. And um, it was really cool to see a lot of people think that yoga is just meditation, like I did. Mm -hmm. Or they think it's just going in to stretch. And can you go into just a meditation? Yes, we have a class titled meditation. Can you go in to get a nice good stretch? Yes, we have a class called restorative and that falls to that category. But there's so many different types. So I keep saying this word functional movement specialist. One thing I like to tell people that as you're looking at, people think that the word flexibility and mobility are the same thing and they are not. 
Flexibility is kind of how low can I go in a squat? And mobility is how easy can I get in and out of the squat? So we have classes that will help you in both ranges. We have classes that will do both of them at the same time. And I don't remember your question at all. <laughs> but uh, um, No, that's okay. It was, yeah, it's kind of like yoga for to, to help people understand who are like, Yoga is meditation. Yes. What is it? Yeah. And, and one of the other things you had asked was a bit of just uh, the eight limbs of right. yoga. Like what yeah. Are, yeah. There's, yeah. It's bigger than just like yes. right, going to a class and you talk about taking it off the mat. Like, I know there's more here. There is. Yeah. There is. So as I said, I've done other forms of movement, right? Mm -hmm. For example, um, I it was definitely not my cup of tea. I was <laughs> doing personal training and teaching yoga at this wellness center in Florida. And long story short, they really needed a spin instructor. And they were like, Danielle, please. I was like, no, I'm not certified. And I was like, I don't really want to. Nothing against it. I know that it's a great workout and people enjoy it. It just has never been my favorite. And they begged me, begged me. Like they were like, we're going to pay for your training. And I was like, oh my gosh, fine. I taught it for a month and I was like, I can't do this. This is not for me. And again, no offense to anybody. Like find the movement that makes you smile mm -hmm. is always my phrase or my thought process mm -hmm. behind it. So with spin, uh, you pretty much learn about the, how the bike works. You learn about some music. You learn about cueing. It's a two-day training. Mm -hmm. Yoga teacher training is a 200 hour training. So I like to always say it's like a semester of school. With there being eight limbs of yoga, there's basically one piece of the puzzle is called your asana, which that means your movement. But there are other categories. So meditation actually has its own little like pocket. Mm -hmm. um, breath work has its own little pocket. So I kind of hate whenever people come with the kind of statement of I've never done yoga before. My doctors told me to do yoga. I love that doctors are referring people to yoga. I think that's amazing. And I'm like, we go us. Like, mm -hmm. that's so cool. But I'm like, gosh, there's so many different pieces to the puzzle. Like, what is it that they said? Is it because of your stress and your anxiety? Is mm -hmm. it because we're um, rehabbing something? Like, what's going on? But the eight limbs are kind of everything from your mind, your breath, your body, and beyond. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for breaking that down. Of course. Of course. <laughs> awesome. So you still have like one of the things you mentioned is you started the business in the community mm -hmm. then opened the space and you've maintained the community classes. Yes. Right. Yes. Which like some people would be like, we're done with that now. We've reached our peak. This is it. And I really appreciate your kind of like mission to be where people are and to like kind of meet them on the mat wherever that's accessible for them. Yes. Can you just share with us like where are those classes taking place now? Where should people kind of look out for yeah. those opportunities? Oh my gosh. It's I'm probably such a bad business owner for not knowing all of them. Um, <laughs> no, I which is totally good... put you on the spot as well. No, 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 so. no. I think that's actually a good problem to have. Like I liked what you said of like, oh, we reached the state of having the brick and mortar. So like by community classes no like I like to say that's our backbone that that's our mm. spine is the community classes and even from a business owner perspective the amount of times I was recently interviewed on another podcast more about the business side of mm -hmm. things and uh, one thing that I told them was if there's a way that you can start before you are in your space or whatever mm -hmm. is that kind of you know um, that that I don't want to say end goal, but that big goal. Mm -hmm. um, if you can start beforehand, that's great because building your brand is huge. And for us, the amount of times that we have people in community classes that they have never been to the studio, like that's how they hear of us, is huge. We get... Um, we try to make it so that our members here in the studio, they always get community classes at a discount. So it's like eight bucks. And that means that you probably are doing your yoga, you're getting your coffee, all those things at once. For the public, if that if it's a ticketed one, it'd be 15. Also great price. That's another thing we try to do is make it to where it is not going to break your wallet. But we get members that will come to, let's say, I'm gonna go do one this month, but I'm gonna bring my friends. And it, again, helps to allow the community to grow. Mm -hmm. But like I said before, we are spread out through a bunch of different cities now. Here in Norfolk, uh, we are at Water's Edge. We're at Makers Craft Brewery, are at Beachside Social in Virginia Beach, we're at the Garage Brewery in Chesapeake, we're at Knott's Coffee in Suffolk, we're at Momac in uh, Portsmouth, 
We're at Oozle Finch in Fort Monroe. And there are a lot more on that wow, list. Wow, uh, there's but so many. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's no excuses. Like, <laughs> we're figuring it out. We're getting on the mat. Yes, yes. And that's why um, we have over 40 classes a week inside the studio. Mm-hmm. So that does not include the community ones. Mm-hmm. That's the main thing. I've only had like two people thus far that have said like, you don't have yoga during a time slot that I am looking for. And I truly want to try and give something. Mm-hmm. And there is that one time frame that for us is like, we're looking at giving that like two o'clock kind of hour because mm-hmm. we've had some requests for it, but it's by far our least uh, request time. So that's where we don't have classes. Yeah. But our earliest is 530 in the morning. And like, I have to give a shout out to that crew because especially during this time of year, whenever it's, I mean, they, they come and they leave the studio and it's still dark. Yeah. But, um, we want to make sure that we're giving something to as whenever we say yoga for every body, number one, we spell it lowercase every uppercase body. But that also means one of the girls that has been a member for almost since we opened, um, she's a nurse. And for her coming to the 530 class, like that's really the only time that she has. But she is, I, I almost want to text her whenever I don't see her name at the 530. I'm like, yo, you okay? Like, yeah. you feeling good? Because um, that's just a consistent thing for her. So we try to make it so that, you know, we don't want it to be that your job is your excuse. And mm-hmm. I'm not trying to say it's easy to mm-hmm. wake up at 530 or come to a class or come to a 7 p.m. class. But we make it so that it is possible. Yeah. There, there is an option for you. Yep. Love that. Yeah. All right. So number one, thank you so much for thank you. sharing all of this and having us here. What can we do like as a community? Like this is amazing. And thank you for keeping it going because I know that there's work on that side of it too. Of course. And yeah. keeping the doors open and like inviting people into co-work and like really cultivating community all over the place. Um, in terms of how we can best support you as a community to make sure your doors stay open, like aside from coming to a class, is there anything else we can do to support? Um, I would say, like I said from the beginning, social media is just this amazing tool. Mm -hmm. And um, you might not like yoga, and that is okay. But you can then share a yoga studio. Mm -hmm. Um, And we try, if you follow us on social media, um, Instagram in particular, Mm -hmm. uh, we try to make stuff that's just not only for the hey, FYI, this is what we have coming to the studio. Mm-hmm. Like uh, we recently had on October 10th, it is World Mental Health, Aware- Mental Health Awareness Day. Mm-hmm. And I went live to do a just free meditation. So we try to give other resources. Some of them are just funny reels, um, but things that will hopefully make you smile mm-hmm. or bring you some zen whenever you can't be here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say if, that the power of social media is huge. And if you're able to give us a like, give us a share, you know, that um, it means a lot. Yeah, makes a difference. It does. Awesome. It does. Well, thank you so much for having us and we'll see you all on the mat. <laughs> thank you.